In 2013, a German fisherman was fishing with three friends in Norwegian waters when he hooked what he thought was a submarine. And you can see why. The fish was struggling for an hour and a half before it was reeled to the surface. But when the fishermen saw what they hooked and how big it was, they had to tie the rope around its tail and tow it to the shore because the fish was simply too big for the boat. On the shore, the fish was examined and weighed with a crane. Turned out it was an Atlantic halibut weighing 515 pounds. What's the big deal, you might wonder? The thing is, this Atlantic halibut accidentally caught by a guy from Germany will help us reveal the secrets the oceans kept for millions of years. Today, you'll learn why the ocean is inhabited by gigantic creatures, what fish is considered a bad omen in Japan, why animals hate land, who can trick the evolution, and many other interesting things. Let's go! If there's one thing the ocean is particularly good at, it's creating gigantic animals. The German fisherman I mentioned in the beginning caught one of those. The Atlantic halibut is the largest flatfish in the world. And that's really saying something. The largest known Atlantic halibut weighs 705 pounds and reaches 15 feet in length. This fish can dive up to 1.2 miles deep and can live up to 50 years. Unless, of course, some lucky fisherman reels it in. On average, adult halibut males weigh from 22 to 33 pounds, sometimes 55, maybe 99 pounds tops. But according to information on the web, female halibuts sometimes weigh up to 550 pounds. But as it often happens, related animals can actually be very different from each other. For example, the Atlantic halibut is related to the Sikalan sole, but you can actually see the latter at the depth of 33 feet. The deepest it goes is 1180 feet, but this is quite rare. This fish is usually 8 inches long, and it's very rare for it to grow up to 14 inches. Feel the difference? But there are other relatives even smaller than that. Tarfops oligolepis is only 1.8 inches long and weighs 0 0.07 ounces. 0 0.07 ounces versus 705 pounds? Don't you think that's… odd? These fish are so similar, they're almost identical in terms of evolution. But their difference in size is amazing. Although nothing in nature happens just like that. And there certainly should be reasons to make these fish so different. First things first. Animals grow faster in the water. Not so long ago, we said in one of our videos that it takes 24 million generations for a creature the size of a mouse to turn into a creature the size of an elephant. However, among all mammals, cetaceans in case you forgot, this group includes whales and dolphins, are the fastest in terms of evolution. It took them only roughly 3 million generations to achieve a thousand-fold increase in size. 3 million generations versus 24. These cetaceans were super fast. And most likely, this difference became possible thanks to the support from the water, in a literal sense of the word. You probably noticed that bodies seem lighter in water than on land, especially if it's seawater. This property seems to have helped mammals grow faster and get bigger because water is what makes whales so big. On land, their organs would simply be crushed under their own weight. So cetaceans won't likely move on land again. To do this, they'll have to lose a lot of weight. However, if whales or dolphins really wanted to shrink, they could do it 30 times faster than they grow. In any case, this is what scientists postulate. There are two reasons that explain this. First, growing bigger requires changes in both the body and muscles, and this goes hand in hand with many problems. To solve them, you need time and new genes. They're formed over millions of generations. Second, all mammals develop from one cell, gradually increasing in size. This means that in order to become smaller, they simply need to stop their growth in time. You must admit this is much easier than coming up with new schemes to grow bigger. However, the common shrews decided that all these long evolutionary processes that require millions of generations aren't worth it. They also don't like to store food for the winter or hibernate. That is, to do what other small animals usually do. Shrews found another way to survive. They're born in the summer and very quickly grow to their maximum size. But then when fall comes, they shrink. Literally. Shrews get smaller and lose about 10 to 20% of their weight. 
And it's not just about muscle and fat mass. Everything becomes smaller, including their internal organs, even the heart and the brains. Gradually, winter ends, and starting from February, shrews begin to grow again until they reach their maximum size in spring. True, their brain doesn't get bigger anymore. Does this mean it shrinks with each new winter? Honestly, I don't know. But shrews live up to 30 months, so they hardly notice the difference. But the fact that shrews get smaller in winter is weird. At first glance, this makes no sense because the smaller you are, the more energy you need to survive in winter. Generating more energy requires more food. And in winter, this becomes a real problem. But the shrews somehow manage to trick evolution. They consume less energy when they get smaller, and scientists have no idea why this happens. <sighs> Although I'm quite used to the fact that scientists don't know the reason why a lot of important things happen. But let's leave the shrews alone and get back to the really big creatures. I'm talking about deep sea gigantism. The tendency of sea creatures from the deepest and coldest parts of the ocean to reach colossal sizes. Squids, sea spiders, worms, and many other species of animals get so big they can become someone's nightmare. To get to the bottom of things, let's look at other giants from today's video. The giant oarfish, an enormous fish from the ray finned class, which looks more like a ribbon with fins. It can be found all over the world, lives at a depth of up to 0.6 miles deep, and reaches 26 feet in length, though there have been reports of unconfirmed specimens up to 36 feet long. Usually, of course, it's measured at a modest 10 to 16 feet. But it was the giant oarfish that was mentioned in the Guinness World Records as the longest bony fish in the world. There are several accounts of the impressive size. Around 1885, fishermen from Maine caught a specimen 25 feet long. And on July 18, 1963, a team of scientists from a marine lab spotted a specimen 50 feet long off the coast of New Jersey. Like all giant creatures, the giant oarfish also has smaller relatives. For example, Veliferidae, which don't go deeper than 330 feet, unlike their big brother, which descends 0.6 miles below. Veliferidae measure only up to 12 inches. This is much less than the length of any of their relatives, and the Veliferidae also look more like normal fish of normal length, not like giant oarfish. In general, giant oarfish look more like giant sea snakes. It's believed that this elongated fish actually inspired the legends about such creatures told by different people. But despite their frightening size and all sorts of myths surrounding them, giant oarfish don't pose any danger to people. Come on, these guys eat plankton. They don't even have real teeth. Some scary sea snakes they are. They aren't even any good as commercial fish because the meat of the giant oarfish looks like slime, which is hardly attractive even for people with unusual tastes. That is, people of course tried to eat it, but the flabby and sticky fish didn't impress anyone. Well, on the other hand, at least some species won't face extinction. At the same time, this is one of the reasons why the species is poorly studied. Fishermen simply throw out giant oarfish even if they accidentally catch them. Scientists have no specimen to study. Most often, they get giant oarfish pushed out by currents closer to the surface. In shallow water, it's much more difficult to find krill, which the giant oarfish feed on. But it's too easy to take damage from wind and waves. Can you imagine this? First, you unwillingly end up in a place with no food, then waves beat you to death. There's absolutely nothing you can do about this, so the shallower the water, the more serious the danger. So all the giant oarfish that people notice near the shore are either already dead or dying. Sad but true. I completely forgot to mention one fun fact about the giant oarfish. There's a myth claiming it's a harbinger of earthquakes. In any case, if the giant oarfish is sighted off the coast of Japan, then that's it. You should expect a disaster. Modern scientists consider this nonsense, but there's still some logic behind this. Deep sea creatures might be more sensitive to any tectonic activity. The next underwater giants we'll talk about are giant isopods. Wait, who? What is this creature that looks like both a crab and an armadillo? Have you ever seen something like that? Well, if not, then it's hardly surprising, because the ocean is full of creatures that even scientists don't know anything about. There are just incredibly many of them. But how is this possible? Well, there are actually two reasons for that. First, the ocean is too big. Many parts of it are simply impossible to reach. 
too deep, too cold, too dangerous, lots of challenges. Second, the scientific community is damn slow. Describing new species takes a lot of time. It's hard. It requires technical acumen, not to mention experts who are always in short supply. At the same time, local fishermen may have known about animals unknown to science for generations and don't even suspect this could be the greatest discovery ever for scientists. At the same time, new species are described constantly. I'm not kidding. Taxonomists, that is biologists who classify organisms, are always busy. For example, in 2020, they described 359 new fish species, as well as many oceanic invertebrates. Scientists describe a new species of shark or a related animal roughly every two weeks. And these are not necessarily fresh discoveries. Samples can wait in the archives for years, even decades before their turn comes. I don't even know how many years it'd take to describe all the animals in the ocean. Now let's get back to giant isopods. In fact, these are crustaceans which are very distantly related to shrimp and crabs. Giant isopods prefer cold water. They can be found at depths of up to 1.5 miles, and this is an absolute record. Not all creatures can get that deep. The maximum length of such isopods reaches 20 inches, but there are reports of specimens 30 inches long. Well, there isn't any proof, but I think it's quite possible. Regular isopods grow to about 3 to 6 inches, while isopods that live in deep, cold seawaters develop deep-sea gigantism. And they feel great. Yes, there may not be much food deep down below, but giant isopods can live years between meals. They just aren't in any hurry. They're perfectly adapted to their lifestyle. In fact, giant isopods are scavengers that eat everything that drops on them from the upper layers of the ocean. When you live like that, you never know whether you'll have dinner tomorrow or in five years. So if suddenly some big carcass sinks to the bottom, giant isopods eat nonstop. They eat so much they swell up and can hardly even move around. But on the other hand, this food will last them for quite a while. So they're sort of deep sea hamsters. And if that doesn't tell you just how voracious giant isopods are, here's a fact. Once, scientists dropped a crocodile carcass to a depth of 6,600 feet. It took the isopods less than a day to penetrate the thick hide and get to the meat. It's not clear how long it took them to eat the crocodile, but I guess they managed it in a few days. Finally, we came to a question that was bound to pop up sooner or later. I told you what deep sea gigantism is, but how do animals actually get this big? There must be a reason for that, right? Scientists suggest there are four factors at play here. Low temperatures. Few people wonder how cold the ocean water is. That is, of course, it all depends on the latitude. It's warmer at the equator than at the poles. As for the depth, the deeper you go, the less sunlight penetrates the water layers. Less light means lower temperatures. The deep ocean, that is everything that's 656 feet below the surface, is quite cold. Its average temperature is only 39 degrees Fahrenheit, but can sometimes drop to 32 degrees. This water is denser and heavier. It's not affected by seasonal changes, it just is a large cold layer where everything is stable. Just to give you a rough idea, the water in Antarctica at the very surface has roughly the same temperature. An untrained person can survive in such water for 10 to 15 minutes, depending on various factors, but will eventually die. We simply aren't designed for living in such aquatic temperatures. But animals came up with deep sea gigantism. Scientists studied this phenomenon and concluded that lowering the temperature leads to an increase in cell size and an increase in life expectancy. That is, cold water creates the exact conditions which cause deep sea animals to grow really big. The Japanese spider crab is a perfect illustration of how this works. Well, it also looks like some character from Star Wars. Do it. Of the 60,000 species of crustaceans on Earth, Japanese spider crabs are the largest, spanning up to 150 inches from the tip of one front claw to the other. They prefer to live in cold waters at a depth of up to 1,640 feet and feel great there. Seriously, 
The lifespan of the Japanese spider crab is 100 years. That's on average. Of course, a size like that comes with a substantial weight, which can reach 44 pounds. I think you can imagine just how small relatives of Japanese spider crabs can be. Naturally, when you're as big and ridiculous as a Japanese spider crab, you're bound to be slow. These guys don't hunt, choosing to scavenge instead. And this, in turn, leads us to another factor that causes deep sea gigantism. Lack of food. Most of the food is found in shallow water. That is where it's warm. The deeper you go, the scarcer the food. In such conditions, it's advantageous to be large. Larger animals can travel greater distances in search of food. Also, giant creatures have amazingly efficient metabolisms, because that's how biochemistry works. There's even Kleiber's rule that establishes a relationship between a metabolic rate and body weight. Perhaps that's the rule that was hacked by the shrews from the beginning of the video. In simple words, you can describe it like this. The bigger you are, the more efficient your metabolism is. And when there isn't much food around, efficiency becomes especially important. In the meantime, the next factor follows from the lack of food. Safety. As I said, most of the food can be found in shallow water, which also means that's where you're more likely to become prey to a predator. No matter what species you are, there will surely be someone who doesn't mind eating you. From an evolutionary point of view, there's no reason for living a long life if you live on the surface, as well as for regeneration, because it requires a lot of strength and resources. You'll get eaten anyway. But as you move deeper, you'll encounter fewer predators. So it's partly due to the lack of predators in the deep sea that giant creatures can live so long and get so big. Life at great depths is very stable. As I said, there aren't even seasonal temperature changes. Storms are also of no concern to giant marine creatures. Remember that giant oarfish die when they get beaten by waves. Deep down below, that's not a problem. And now it's time to remember another giant creature, and this is a sponge. Hmm, how do I put it to make it more clear to you? Well, if SpongeBob were this kind of sponge, he would look sort of like this. Actually, these sponges can be found across all the world's oceans. They can live at any depth, but sometimes they grow to incredible size. Not far from Hawaii, 1.3 miles deep, they found a sponge measuring 11 by 7 feet. Yes, it's like a minivan, only in water and spongy. The smallest sponges can reach several inches, but let's not talk about them, because the fact that this giant sponge is also very old is much more exciting. When I say very old, I mean that it could be 2,300 years old or even older. In any case, that's how scientists estimate the age of large sponges living in shallow water. But I'm not done with the factors that can cause deep sea gigantism, and the next one is oxygen. It makes perfect sense. You can't get big if you're suffocating. Back in 1999, scientists proved that the maximum potential size of an organism directly correlates with increased levels of oxygen dissolved in deeper waters. The deeper you are, the greater the solubility of oxygen, and large organisms can, well, let's say, take deeper breaths. But it's not only that. Animals at great depths use the oxygen they consume very slowly. Cold water reduces the rate of their metabolism, but there's never a lack of oxygen. Turns out the animals don't need to save it, growing bigger without fear of oxygen deprivation. Well, you already realize that the cold environment helps animals get big. But I have one more proof of this theory, or rather a whole continent and the waters surrounding it. Before people encountered deep sea giants elsewhere in the world's oceans, they found them near the South Pole. Yes, in Antarctica, huge sea creatures don't need to get deep down below, where not even the most advanced human-made devices can get. Here you can find gigantic creatures close to the surface. The shallow waters are home to giant sea slugs, sponges, worms, sea spiders, and even giant single-cell organisms. Can you imagine a huge cell? They do live in Antarctica. All of them can be found within reach at, well, roughly 29 feet deep. Compare that to the miles we talked about today. Antarctica makes things simple. 
well, as simple as life in such a cold environment can be, of course. And since we're talking about Antarctic waters again, it's time to remember the colossal squid. This guy can feel quite comfortable even 1.2 miles deep. However, it's usually teenage squids who hang out there. Adults prefer not to swim so deep and stay somewhere at a depth of 0.4 miles below. At the same time, smaller relatives of colossal squid live in shallow water somewhere near the reefs of the Bahamas. And of course, they differ in their size. The colossal squid is about 14 times longer than the common New Zealand arrow squid. Just look at this monster next to the whale to understand how huge it is. In general, giant squid are not particularly different from their smaller kin. They have the same body parts, including beaks, tentacles, and eyes, though they do have some perks that are essential when you're this big. For example, the serrated suckers for capturing large prey, and incredibly big eyes. However, we recently made a video on this. Check it out if you haven't. I talked about giant squid in greater detail there. Can we make any conclusions from all this reasoning? Which of the factors affects animals more, turning them into deep sea giants? Well, if you ask the scientists, they, well, make a guess. Yes, yeah, scientists aren't sure of anything. No one has yet figured out how exactly these evolutionary mechanisms work, leading to a sharp increase in size. They just happen, and that's it. Okay, okay. Let's give science a bit more time. Personally, I think the key factors are low temperature, it lets the creatures slow down their metabolism, and a large amount of oxygen, which allows limitless cell growth. It seems that nothing else is required. The rest is just nice bonuses. What do you think? Hey, I found another argument to support my theory. Dinosaurs. The first of them were quite small, but then there was a sharp increase in the level of oxygen in the atmosphere from 15 to 19 percent. According to scientists, it was the increased oxygen levels that helped the dinosaurs grow big enough to become giant sauropods. Well, that was definitely one of the factors. See you later.